So when did you start playing piano? Uh, probably about five, six years old, and I was a little toddler. I would bang on the neighbor's uh, piano, and she told my mom, you know, get that kid a piano, and sh they got me an upright, which I still have, and uh, got me uh, the teacher up the street, the old lady up the street, who's probably uh, was younger than I am now. She was ancient, and, uh, and I remember that well. I remember the recitals there, and then, then they got me a really good teacher. And, but I kind of went from teacher to teacher, and I was the third of three, and they kind of let me do what I wanted to do. So I quit and restarted, quit and restarted. Mm -hmm. There were no ear teachers at all at that time, so I was a little bit in the wilderness. But I got good training and uh, kind of kept pursuing it. And um, also had a neighbor who backed up to us whose son, old, uh, whose son was probably 10 years older than I was, oldest son. And he went on to be a professor at uh, State University of New York in uh, Albany. And uh, he sent me a recording of his uh, about 10 years ago. And it was really interesting that I think I was probably influenced by listening to him oh. practice because uh, when I was listening to his recording, right when I would think, you know what would sound good here, he would go and do that. And so I think I probably got some sensibility from what he was doing. You say John Fogarty did? Yeah, John Fogarty, when I was in high school, lived uh, not far from uh, my folks. It's a house I grew up in. And uh, he would jam. Uh, you know, he was writing a lot of the tunes then and uh, like looking out my back door and he would, you'd hear him jamming and I was always thinking, oh, me and John, you know, <laughs> <laughs> sharing the same air. The same <laughs> so. Did you? going into playing piano professionally? I was a kind of torn about what to do uh, because I, I was a good student for the most part until I decided not to be. But I was, I was on a track, you know, a pretty good college track. And uh, at that time, you know, if you wanted to go to Berkeley, I'd gone to Berkeley school in a summer session. But if you wanted to do that, that was a jazz school. That was not where you just learned a lot of stuff. So really you were kind of out on your own if you were an ear player or a, a roots player, which is kind of what I was. And um, so anyway, I decided to uh, stick around the Bay Area. I was in the San Francisco Bay Area in, the Ber in Berkeley right. and write songs. And uh, I was writing songs with a buddy of mine and, and when we got someone, uh, we got a group that was signed to RCA that wanted to record uh, one of our songs and they had a big record deal and uh, we wouldn't let them record it. And then they, <laughs> and it was our big break. Well, we were stupid. So, oh, and um, oh. yeah, so I kind of blew that. And uh, so I was kind of bouncing around the Bay Area and trying to get something going. And uh, I heard that Cecil Taylor, the avant-garde pianist, was teaching at Antioch College in Yellow Springs. So I thought, I'm going to hitchhike and get there and I was always big on these big moves you know I'd been to Monterey and Woodstock and I went to this encampment because my folks were trying to keep me from going to the Chicago Democratic Convention <laughs> so I had a lot of forest gump in me <laughs> and but anyway so I started hitchhiking and I got to Montana and I kind of stuck around there and did a hippie camp out in, a, or in the Bitterroot Mountains and then when it got cold, moved into a small town called Stevensville. This was all just nowhere, which is now multi-million dollar real estate where Charles Schwab and these guys are. And, uh, but I got there and there were three, it was a logging town. And there were three small bars with upright pianos and I played all the bars. And then the guy I bought a piano from, I taught his kid's piano and hitchhiked around. I didn't have a car or a truck or anything. I was in Montana for about eight months, yeah. And it was cool because, you know, we were up in a, in this house with no running water, you know, out in the country, and we'd got, you know, haul the water in, and I mean, it's as close as I got to, you know. Roughing it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and of course, I had my piano. I bought this piano. And we, uh, you know, so I was listening to the jukebox. I didn't know any songs, and I would play these gigs. I'd play Boogie Woogie, and I'd make up songs. It was easier for me to make up a song knowing structure of you know verse verse chorus verse and to kind of make up a melody and I forget it the next day so in my mind I had all these classics that have vaporized but 
Um, so and I would do three, four hour gigs, 15, 20, 25 bucks a gig. The first country album when we were in Montana that we listened to was the same train, different time, the Merle Haggard tribute to Jimmy Rogers. And so uh, mm. I'm playing with Merle Haggard now and playing those songs. Yeah, which are really fun. Yeah. I went down uh, to Berkeley over uh, Christmas break. Uh, you know, my, my uh, grandfather was, was sick and I went to see him and, and all that. And the night before I went back, uh, my friend who I've been writing songs with said there's a band that needs a piano player. So uh, I said that's all I wanted to do was be in a band. So went over to their house and auditioned and then the guys that said that I passed the audition then told me they had no say in anything and then the leader came came in and he told me to come go to the club that night and I went to the club and then uh, and then they hired me and they said you don't want to move in the band house it's we're very poor you know you want to live with your folks and I do not want to live with my folks you know <laughs> 19 so they hired me and that was asleep at the wheel that was my band that was the first band that that hired me and I, but I felt it was a natural fit Right. And Ray started out by saying, now listen to this record. And I said, okay, and I came back. I said, I, I couldn't hear any piano in the record. Well, that's, that's how it's going to be. You're not going to play. <laughs> he was just kind of conditioning me. Right. But, uh, but anyway, so that became my, my home band, and it still is to this day. When did Sleep at the Wheel come to Austin? Or uh, they came, uh, we came to Austin in uh, February 74. We started coming about a year earlier, Commander Cody brought us to Austin and Eddie Wilson at the Armadillo really mm -hmm. okay. kind of uh, fostered us and we had a week-long gig in November and we parked the bus in the parking lot. We were so welcomed here and and popular immediately and we had been told we would be but we were kind of you know we we had a Tuesday night gig in Lo at Berkeley at the Long Branch and uh, Eddie Money played Wednesday uh, and I think the Doobie Brothers played Monday or whatever and uh, Clover with Huey Lewis played Thursday something like that playing the same club we were at so there's a little bit of like shouldn't brag too much about that we were on that because everybody went on to this like huge fame but the wheel had this uh, the wheels had this great career and Ray's, Ray's worked very hard and really kept it out there and I tell him keep working Ray I didn't know that you still played with Sleep at the Wheel then. Uh, no, well, I don't. I mean, I, um, I've i come and gone between piano players and done tours and some albums. You know, Willie right. and the Wheel was the most recent. Oh, wow. How long were you at the Armadillo? How long did that last, that stopped like in the early 80s? I think or the last gig of the Armadillo, I think, was New Year's, like 80 or 81. And right. I was not there. I was up in New York. I had gone... Uh, up to New York to play in Best Little Whorehouse in Texas in oh, right. 78, June of 78. I was living in Bastrop actually and when I went to New York but um, where Cheryl and I met was in New York uh, doing Best Little Whorehouse in Texas and mm -hmm. um, she was, she's from LaPorte uh, outside of Houston but we met in New York. Have you gone a lot on the road? Well or? I haven't been, I mean after the Whalen thing was over in 1986 we had a our son was a year old and I got off the road pretty much I mean I did I got off the road and then mm -hmm. our daughter was born in 89 and uh, did last of the breed tour in 07 and in 08 did Willie and the Wheel and these are three four week tours right. and then now I'm out with Merle Haggard and that's you know 10 days a month maybe wow. if that so. it's amazing he's still going I know, I know. He's great. He's great. He's 76 and he's still got it, you know. And we just did uh, 13 dates up in Canada. Wow. And um, he's, you know, he's, he can, yeah, he's still great. You mentioned that y'all had recorded the wheel at that Leo de la Garca studio yeah, we did. in Golden State That's recording. Right. That's right. Was that, do uh, you remember what well, period? Well, we were doing demos. Now, Ray would know every detail right. of this, but we did about two or three demos. And uh, that was a demo. It could have been for Dot or Decca. We did, I mean, because we signed with United Artists, but we did a few demos, and uh, Ray would know the details. He'll tell you what songs we did. It's all kind of, he always says, you remember, you know. <laughs> right, right. I'm kind of like the, you know, like the old relative without the memory. You remember Mom, right? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, Mom, yeah. But he rem you remember the demo, when he tells me, it comes back to me exactly what songs we did. We did three or four songs. Interesting. Yeah. 
Do you do your own recording? Do any of your own recording? No, I had this idea that I would, really? but um, and I and I kind of got started on it, but um, you know, my interest is just in playing, in playing. it and not dealing with it, and uh, yeah. I, I'm more interested in the sound of things and how things are recorded. But it's just when I have that, when I have that free minute. I want to play the piano, and I don't want to think about anything else. So yeah. I have to recognize that to understand that's kind of how I what am. You are. Yeah. Right. Cool, Floyd. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you.